worship the Lord. Let's give him all of our praise. He's worthy of it. Amen. Are y'all ready to give him some praise in this place? Come on, every hand to heaven, Renee. Let's go. He loves us.
Ascension Sunday, best day of the year. Hallelujah. How many saved in this place? How many justified in this place? Woo! Let's lift our hands to the one who gave it all. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We were all going the wrong way. But he stepped in and he fixed it. He fixed it. He fixed me. Woo, he fixed you. Thank you, Lord. Eternal life. Eternal life. He bought it. Sins washed away. Washed away forever, forgotten, cast into the sea of forgetfulness. He remembers it no more. That's my Jesus. What a Savior.
of Jesus, that you sent him to us to die on the cross, Lord, so we can live free forever, eternally with you. We give you honor in this place on this beautiful Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. Come on, give him some praise in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, it's such a beautiful name. Lord, we thank you for that name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee has to bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Let's give him some more praise in this house. Hallelujah. Let's just bow our heads. Father, we're especially grateful today on this day, this Resurrection Sunday, where we're celebrating with people all over the world the goodness, the great plan that you had for the world. And Lord, we give you honor in everything that we do and say in this place today. Lord, I ask your blessing on everybody that's here in the building as well as those that are watching online. Lord, I thank you that there's no distance, that right now we can send the word no matter what people are facing. They can have hope because of the cross of Jesus Christ. Lord, we give you honor in this place and glorify your name. Come on, let's do it again. Praise the Lord. Give him a great shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, y'all look fabulous. So good to see all of you. Praise the Lord. Why don't you greet somebody sitting next to you or someone across the aisle? Show yourself friendly. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. God is so good. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, it's great to see everybody in the house. How many are here for the very first time? I know I'm at a few people in the foyer. Hands up around the house. Look at this. Wonderful. We'll start with this section. Where are you from? Independence, Louisiana. I met them earlier. We're out in this section. Who's coming from where? Colorado. Where, another state? Ohio. Arizona. Arizona, Ohio. Oklahoma. New Mexico. Oklahoma. New Mexico. <laughs> Hallelujah. Any other states represented in the house? Ohio. Ohio. Wisconsin. Yes, Caleb's parents are here. And Florida. How about Louisiana? Anybody from Louisiana in the house? Praise the Lord. Well, thank you for taking the time to be here with us on this beautiful day. We're excited about Jesus and all that he's done. We have a very special service planned today. My husband, Brother Jesse's in the house. He'll be bringing today's message. How many people got to go and look in the Vision Center that's new this Sunday? Did anybody get to go in there and look around? Isn't that special? We love sharing what God's done in our ministry since it began in 1976. Jesse preached his first message, and we have a little timeline in there, a few of the products that are available. Make sure if you haven't seen it, check it out. And also, anybody enjoyed the refreshments in the foyer at the Welcome Center? Praise the Lord. Well, we just want to let you know how special you are to us, how we appreciate you coming. And it's just to have a time of fellowship is so important. Amen? Praise the Lord. Well, uh, we have some great announcements. I'd like you to watch the screens, and then Brother Jesse will be here to preach. God bless you. Happy Resurrection Sunday. It's a beautiful time to worship our Heavenly Father at Covenant Church. Thank you for joining us here in Destrehan, Louisiana, or if you're part of our online audience from all over the world. Here at Covenant Church, we have so many great ways to strengthen your faith so that you can walk in victory. If you're a first time visitor at Covenant Church, we are so glad you're here. If you haven't already filled out a Covenant Church Connect card that is found in the back of your pew, Please do so now and place it in the offering when it's received or bring it to the Welcome Center after service. Get connected with a Covenant Church home group. Groups gather on Sunday, April 23rd from 6 to 7.30 p.m. These classes take place the fourth Sunday of every month for fellowship, Bible study, and prayer. Visit the Welcome Center for more information. Our next Covenant Church Soul Winning Outreach will take place Saturday, April 22nd. If you'd like to join us as we go out and spread the gospel within the community, please sign up at the Welcome Center. Join us for our Wednesday night services as Pastor Kathy begins her new series, The Parables of Jesus. 
Services begin at 7 p.m. in the sanctuary. If you're in middle or high school, make plans to join Pastor Saudi and the United Youth Leaders on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Service takes place in the Annex. If your children are three months to seventh grade, we encourage them to join Pastor Melissa and the Kids Town Leaders at 10 a.m. on Sundays in the East Wing. Also, child care for three months to kindergarten will be provided at 7 p.m. on Wednesday nights in the East Wing. We'll see you in Kids Town. Let's unite in prayer in the prayer room on Wednesdays before service at 6.30 p.m. and on Sunday mornings before service at 9 to 9.45 a.m. Ladies of Covenant Church, make plans to join us for our next Women's Breakfast, Saturday, May 6th at 9 a.m. in the Family Room. Let's have a great time together as we hear a great word from our guest speaker, Pastor Betty Garrison. If you're a part of our global audience, comment where you're watching from. And if you haven't already, follow us on our Covenant Church social media platforms or visit our website at jdm.org to find out more about the ministry. God bless. Jonathan Shuttlesworth is coming to Jesse Duplantis Ministries Covenant Church to share an exciting word that will change your life. But when you stand up straight with your shoulders back and have a clean look in your eye, the fire of God down in your spirit, and he sees that you know who you are, the devil will back off for free. Jonathan Shuttlesworth, Friday, April 14th, 7 p.m. at Covenant Church, 1973 Ormond Boulevard in Destrehan, Louisiana. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a great God bless you. I think you can do better than that. Come on. Hallelujah. What a blessing of the Lord. You boys in a hurry on these lights, huh? Going up and down. Thought we, we were losing electricity coming on and off. Praise the Lord. God is so good. Happy Resurrection Day. Did anybody eat some chocolate yet? Yes. No? What the, praise the Lord. Such a blessing of the Lord. It is a sweet day. Today is the birthday of Christianity, yes. and it really is, because if Jesus would not have resurrected, Christianity would have went by the wayside. They would have forgot him, no matter how many miracles he did, you know how people are, they would do that, and say, well, just someone else that had a unique life, but, you know, it, it can't be everlasting, but he did raise from the dead. And it's such a blessing, and I, I want to talk about that this morning, and I'm really excited about it. But I want to give, the Bible says give honor to who honors do. I, I don't steal, I don't steal people's stuff. You know, uh, uh, you know uh, and when they say something, you know, I'll, I'll give them credit. And I may preach on it, but I'm going to give them credit. But I turned on the television last night, and just so happened, I think I hit, was it Fox News or something? Like, I, I don't know. And Dan Bonagino, anybody ever heard of Dan Bonagino? Was on... And um, I've never seen his program. You know, I knew he was a he was a, a ex um, he protected the president, an ex policeman, blah blah this and that. And he's known for uh, saying what he believes. But at the end of his, I just happened to just turn it on. At the end of the program, it showed up and it said, "On the, you might have seen it, Resurrection Day." And he said, "I want to make this announcement. I'm uh, I'm so glad, and I want you all to know that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior." Anybody see that last night? Did you see that? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and I'm very proud of that, and I want you to know that. And God has given me a gift. I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. God has given me a gift, which is eternal life. He also gave me a gift to be on Fox so he could be there. And he said, many people have died for the faith, or have died for their faith. He said, especially the apostles, they, they died for the faith. You know why? And he, this is the statement that got me. No one dies for a lie. Amen. Amen. Think about that. And the, the apostles were martyred. Some of them, well, one of them was flayed or skinned alive. Nobody going to go through that unless they saw Jesus. Unless they walk with him, talk with him. Think about that for a minute. No one dies for a lie. So, Mr. Bonagino, I salute you. That is just such a blessing of the Lord. Because Jesus is risen. And the better part of it, he's coming back. Somebody shout somebody. So if you got your Bibles, I want to get into this real quickly. I want, we're going to read all four Gospels of this resurrection real quickly. Then, I, then I'm going to go to where I want, uh, I want to preach this morning. Matthew chapter 28 first. I'll give them a little time to find it. I didn't tell them I was going to do this, but I thought about it while I was sitting there. 
Matthew chapter 28, verse 1. It says, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. How'd you like to be called the other Mary? <laughs> kind of a shot, huh? The other Mary, <laughs> you know. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. He made it a pulpit to preach the good news. What's up with holding you in? It's going to blow off and roll over, sit on it, and make it a pulpit to preach the good news. I preached that probably 40 years ago. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow, and, and for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. The angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, everybody say, as he said, come and see the place where the Lord lay. Go with me to the book of Mark, chapter 15. The book of Mark, chapter, excuse me, 16, excuse me, chapter 16, verse 1. We're going to read it here in the four different points of view of the, of the resurrection. Mark, chapter 16, verse 1. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. That was a waste of money. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he saith to them, Be not affright, you seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He's not here. Behold the place where they laid him. You should never go looking for Jesus in tombs. Some of you are going to church, and your church is a tomb. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. There's no life in it. There's nothing but religion. And religion is a garden of weeds. It's a theological wilderness. But my mama went there, and she's buried in the back. Well, dig her up, move her. And put her in a place, bless God, where there's life. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching, because I'm very strong about that. Why would you go to a dead place? Does that make any sense to anybody? Go with me to the book of Luke. I have to get off of that real quick because I see some people frowning. <laughs> Luke, the book of Luke, chapter, let me get my hands here, chapter 24, verse 1. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? That's another powerful statement. I mean, why would you do that? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee? Ooh, verse 8 says, and they remembered his words. Why does the angel have to remind them of it? We should never forget the words of Jesus Christ. Because in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. So the most powerful thing you can do and hear is the word of God. And it more, it's more powerful than miracles, healings. Even though it has, it has the power to create miracles and heal it, it's the word of God. It's more powerful than worship. It's more powerful than praise. Why? Because everything I just said, the word creates it. The word is a creator. It's a vessel that carries your destiny in it. Go with me to the book of St. John. Hallelujah. Y'all enjoying this already? So you'll know where I'm going at. St. John. Verse 20, I mean, excuse, chapter 20, verse 1. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene. Notice Mary Magdalene always showed up at things. I like her. 
She cometh early when it was yet dark unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and saith to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulchre. He stooping down, looking in, saw the linen cloth lying, yet when he got not in, then cometh Simon Peter following him, and he went into the sepulchre, seeing the linen cloth lie, and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen cloth, but wrapped to get together in a place by itself. No, Jesus was very neat. You ever notice that? How many of you get out of the bed and you never make your bed to Till you change the sheets. You just keep it unmade all week long. Watch this. Verse 8. They went in that other disciple which first came to the supper, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their house. Now one of the greatest things in the world is resurrection day. But Jesus said something before he was resurrected to make them realize why he would be resurrected. Go with me today to the book of St. John, chapter 11. Just back up a little bit to the book of St. John, chapter 11, to another funeral. St. John, chapter 11, there's a funeral going on. Jesus couldn't go to funerals. he messed them up. One of his friends died, Lazarus. He loved Lazarus. Lazarus, Martha, and Mary. That was his friends. And I want to read, oh, let's just start with verse 18 of St. John chapter 11. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off, and many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as her as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Maybe Martha should have done that. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou has been here, my brother had not died. I could think, I can hear Jesus' thoughts. Well, if I wasn't here, you were here. Change it. Hmm. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Yet Jesus had told them to ask, it, and it, you, you would receive. Seek and you shall knock, and you know, it'll all be open to you. But see, people hear things, but don't hear things. Watch it. Jesus, but I know, let me go to verse 20. Then said Mother Jesus, Lord, if I had been here, my brother had not died, verse 22, but I know that even now whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it to thee. Jesus saith unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Notice how positive Jesus is. He wasn't shooting dice. He said it so loud, the words turned red. Look at that. <laughs> Martha said unto him, now this is religion, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. So she made it to the last day. What's wrong with the first day? Why do you put your faith in the future when you can have it in the now? Well, that's about, why are so many people waiting on something to happen when they ought to believe that it's happened and now they can just receive it? Because every problem you got, your answer is older than your problem. But I'm sick. By your stripes you were healed 2,000 years ago before you were ever born. Jesus had an answer for your sickness. My God. No, it's the last day. People are always doing that. Jesus said unto her, verse 25 is where I want to get to. I am. Now, he didn't just say I am. That's the name of Jehovah God. I am. And because he's I am, the resurrection, underline that in your Bible if you can, and the life, underline that word life. He that believeth in me, Though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whoso liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Then he asked that question. Believest thou this? I want to talk today on this wonderful resurrection day. On the title of this message is where there is resurrection, there is life. 
See, a lot of people say they're born again, but they're walking around like zombies with no life. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. A resurrection will raise you, but life will sustain you. People may remember your resurrection, but they'll never forget your life after you've come out of that. Where is the life that we're supposed to have today? A lot of people all over the world are believing in resurrection. But where is the life that they should be living? Where is the life that should be seen? Think about that for a minute. So I want you to write this, this, this point down. Death, resurrection, and life are the most tremendous words in the human speech or in human speech because it says everything. Death. Resurrection, life. The answer to death is resurrection. The answer to resurrection is life. You can be raised from the dead. There's a vast difference. You've heard me say it before. Between being raised from the dead and being resurrected from the dead. When you're raised from the dead, and many people have been raised from the dead. And it's documented. But they die again. But when you resurrect it from the dead, you never die again. Why don't you die again? Because life is greater than resurrection. Greater than death. And Jesus is that life who lives inside of you. So let me say that again. Death, resurrection, and life are the most tremendous words in human speech. Because it has answers to it. It shows you what's going to happen, when, where, and how. Now, most people don't like to talk about death. Let me tell you something about that. Death is the highway. Write this down. Death is the highway or the exodus into life. It's just the door that you go through. Death is the highway or the exodus into life and joy. You see what I'm saying? So in other words, you go from death to life. And notice that no one ever speaks of death anymore because why? Because life is now so great and so powerful that death can't even get around it. Do you see that? It's an exodus. It's, death is an exodus to an entrance. An entrance to eternal life. Why does the body have to die? Sin. If Adam and Eve would have sinned, we'd still, we, we would be doing this message, not the resurrection, but we'd be preaching something in the Garden of Eden. Think about that for a minute. But watch it. It attacked itself to the body. And then the time clock started ticking on your life through your body, but all your body is is an earth suit. That's why you don't look good when you dead. Don't he look good? No, he dead. Why? There's no life there. What makes the resurrection so wonderful? The life. It's the life that's in an individual. That makes God who he is. Remember, death is just an exodus to an entrance. He go, he, from death to life. So write this down. Christ was not a stream of life. He was the source of life. Christ was not a stream of life. A little trickle here. He was the literal source of life. He gives life because he possesses life. See, you can give something you possess. Paul said, I know in whom I have believed and I'm persuaded. When they're going to cut his head off because he possessed life, he says, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I have kept the faith. That's why the theme this year, if you keep the faith, everything is yours. Let me help you. Even in your body that's mortal, you can live as long as you want. The life is in your tongue, not in your heart, not in your legs, not in your brain, in what you say. That's life. Why wouldn't you speak life? I mean, Moses tells people, God said, I put for you life and death. Then he tells you what he would choose, choose life. That you and your seed may live, not survive, but live. Notice life is, 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 is so big, it encompasses everything. 
The reason why you watching me today, because I'm living. And you never know what I'm going to say again. No telling what he's going to say. So what I'm saying is Christ was not a stream of life. He was the source of life. He gives it because we pos he possesses it. Well, he also possesses healing because he's the healer. He possesses possessions because he's the possessor. And because he's all that, he lives inside of you. So if Christ in you the hope of glory, then you should be a healer and a possessor. Why? Because you have the same life he has. That's why he said, say to that mountain. And he said, just stand there and look at it. Talk. Why? Your tongue. What's your tongue's going to say? Life. Think about that. I mean, I'm pretty sure when Jesus saw the, the widow name's boy, <laughs> he didn't walk up and say, boy, you look good, don't you? You ever hear people tell you that funeral? They, the, they go to the casket, and they, if they have an opening casket, they go, he looks good. Uh, no, uh, he don't look good. <laughs> he, he, he looked dead to me. <laughs> Why? Because there's no life. Ah. So why do you freak out when you see life? How many times you want your parents or your mama, oh, I wish they would come to church, and you know, because I want them to meet Jesus. And then they go, oh, wait a minute. Oh, God, oh, Lord, let us have a normal service. Let's don't, get, don't let sister so-and-so go crazy, you know. You know that flag lady that runs all over the church? <laughs> have a missed church today. Because mama going to freak out. And you know that person going, come on, just start screaming and hollering. And some just fall on the floor. Lord, let's have a dull service. Why don't you go to the funeral home? Because the church has to be life. Do you see that? You know why people call revival revival? Life. Have you ever been in a revival like this? Hello. Would you like to meet Jesus Christ as Lord? I hope you don't come up so I can get out of here a little early. <laughs> that certainly isn't revival, is it? That certainly isn't life. Hmm. Let me say that point again. Christ was not a stream of life. He was the source of life. He, he gave life because he possessed life. So when you see that, he kept telling my, see, there was the prelude. Martha, I am. He could have just stopped right there. I am the resurrection. Oh, oh. And the life. And here comes that relief. I know he's going to rise in that day. Go back in the house, Martha. Cook some. Send Mary out here. You know the other one? <laughs> she must have been pretty important, the other one. You notice that she only allowed them to call her the other Mary once. <laughs> Women are funny about that. You notice the other three guys, uh, uh, Mary, uh, so long, uh, Mary. <laughs> don't call me other. <laughs> when, we, when we first got born again, we went to this a Pentecostal church called Terrebonne Full Gospel Temple. I mean, and Kathy, we didn't know nothing about God, so we just go there. And my name is Jesse the Planets. So I said there, people said, what's your name? I said, I'm Jesse the Planets. I said, my wife, Kathy. We're so glad you came, Brother Jesse. And Sister Jesse, we thank you for coming too. <laughs> Kathy thought that was her other Mary. She said, I'm not Sister Jesse. I am Catherine Kyra Duplantis. But you can call me Kathy. Don't you ever call me Jesse. And for a while, they would say, Sister Jessie, she wouldn't even answer. She's like the other Mary. You can say it once, but you ain't going to write it down no more. <laughs> Look at the women. That's right. Write this down. Christ's life is beyond the reach of death. That immortality is contained and involved in the idea of life. Let me say it again. Christ's life is beyond the reach of death. My God, you're born again. That power, that immortality, see, is beyond the reach of death. That immortality is contained 
and involved in the idea of life. That's what he was trying to get over to, Mary, uh, to Martha. I am. So if you're going through some tough times, just think of this word, I am. It don't make no difference what it is, spiritual, physical, or financial, or all three. I am. I am is he who sent me. Sometimes I go to services or I go to a church and, and I, when I said, the Lord sent me. I wasn't just looking for a meeting. I don't just go around to find a meeting. I don't even ask for meetings. Unless the Lord speaks to me and people tell me, listen, if you ever get an a, 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 a open date, call me or something like that. I know you're busy. I'm about ready to go to Bermuda. I ain't never been to Bermuda in my life. I know it's stuck out in the middle of the ocean. A lot of water around there. And the Lord said, go to, go to Bermuda. I said, I don't know nobody in Bermuda. He said, well, I do. <laughs> so I had Denise, where's Denise? She probably back here. I had Denise, I said, Get, see if there's a church in Bermuda. Because they have pink sand there. What kind of people live in Bermuda <laughs> with pink sand? I ain't never heard of pink sand in my life. Anybody ever been to Bermuda? Anybody? I never have. I don't know. We found him. It turned out he has the big, he's the head of all the churches. Just called him and said, uh, you know, brother, oh, yeah, I know him. He want to come to Bermuda. He said, come. So we're going to Bermuda. Yeah. On the way to Italy. Yeah. On the way to Denmark. Yeah. On the way to Switzerland. On the way to France. And I hope I don't have to fly back to America. I'd like to go on to heaven with the rapture of the church. Let me say this. If the rapture comes while I'm in France, you can have the jet. Because I'm going to be able to float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. Woo. Notice that. Christ is life is beyond the reach of death. That immortality is contained and involved in the idea of life. So the reason why I have so much joy because I celebrate the life God gave me. You understand? I celebrate it daily. Write this point down. We should celebrate the life for it is far greater than the resurrection. I tell people I got born again. But after I say that, then I start talking about the life that God gave me. The life that I now live. And that greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. And if God be for me, that's life. Who could be against me? And I'm more than a conqueror. I say to that mountain, be thou removed. I don't want him to look at you. Be thou cast in the sea. I don't have time. People say, I never see you sick, sad, discouraged, busted, despondent. I don't have time. I got so much life. See, you, you got to understand that life needs to be given in every which way, shape, and form. It'll bless people beyond their wildest dreams. I've had people come and say, but just, we so, just smile. You make a smile. I said, okay. How many teeth do you want to see? One lady didn't believe that these teeth were real. She stuck her fingers in my mouth. I should have bit the woman. She literally grabbed, I don't say they're real. I said, yeah, they're real, woman. Get your fingers out of my mouth. That's a true story. They got some crazy people. The spirit of stupid come up on people sometimes. And it's hard to cure stupidity. Don't look around here. I saw some of y'all look around here. We should celebrate the life for it is far greater than the resurrection. Why did me and Kathy have a good marriage? That doesn't mean we don't argue. We would never argue if the woman would listen to me. I'm, I'm three years older. I was driving my tricycle before she was born. So I got three years of knowledge she didn't have. Look, it don't impress her at all. But the reason why Life. Como should I say that, Lord? I don't have to go on a date once a week to keep my marriage together. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. You got you to have romance. What? 
Romance? <laughs> what is romance? That's a hard word to define. In other words, if you love somebody, you got life, romance is an automatic part of it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing that, you know. But a lot of times, Kathy said, what are we going to do today? Like as if I can tell it because she ain't listening. <laughs> because if I say to her, I don't want to do that. Okay, well, what are we going to do that? Well, I don't know. What do you want to do? I can't tell you who don't want to do what I want to do. So what do you want to do? Well, I thought we'd go downtown and eat at Mr. B's. Okay, that starts it right there. Then maybe she starts talking, maybe we can walk around the quarter a little bit. Okay, that's it. And you know, after we eat, then we just go home and take a nap. Okay. <laughs> then we wake up and say, what's for supper? <laughs> Cajun people, they talk about food all the time. <laughs> we ate last night. <laughs> I was celebrating Rich's birthday. <laughs> at P.F. Chang. Now we got food everywhere. And we're talking about food. <laughs> we went over to the North Shore. Uh, we had lunch. Food. Went to the uh, Chifuncta restaurant. I mean, that's the, that's the name of the river, right? The Chifuncta River. You got to speak in tongues to say that. <laughs> you lift your hands up. Chifuncta. People go, I, I, I got the interpretation. <laughs> And they kept bringing food, and they're kind of, and we just sitting there, and we just throwing it all to Richie, you know, because it's his birthday. He choose it, my lord. But when it came to dessert, everybody got a spoon. All you came with, <laughs> hitting the cross. <laughs> it was good. Yeah, we had a great time. You can see people say them people enjoy themselves. Why? Life. Nobody looked at each other and said, "Why'd you come?" No, life. You see what I'm saying? It was such a, actually, for the first time in our life, we, Richard and, and Tammy picked me up, me and Kathy up, and we, there was no traffic. We were early on the North Shore. There was no traffic on the causeway. There was no traffic in, in, in Metairie. There was no traffic on the interstate. Where's everybody? What were they doing? Sucking crawfish heads. That's where they, where they were all home. <laughs> You know, balling crawfish, <laughs> just doing whatever. But it was wonderful without no traffic. <laughs> so we didn't know what to do. Because, you know, we, uh, Greg and, and, and Carrie are so sweet, we got here early, and they said, we'll meet you at the restaurant, which means that they didn't want us at their house. <laughs> oh, no, I'm just, uh, look at it. She goes, ah. Oh. <laughs> That's what Richie said. No, 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 no. <laughs> so we got to drive around. So we went to stores. Where else? Looking around. And had a nice time. I, I don't know much about the North Shore. I get confused. I don't know where Mandeville, Covington, or Madisonville it is. Because when you go down there off that bridge, you better hit it fast. Because wh whichever one you go, you're going to wind up somewhere. But it seems like everybody knows where I-12 is. Not me. I didn't go that far. I took a wrong turn. <laughs> You know, had a wonderful time and came back and, and prayed for someone, went over uh, to uh, Carrie's mother's home, beautiful place, prayed for her sister, believing God for complete healing. Had, had a one got to talk. Kathy was talking so much we could hardly leave. <laughs> okay, that's the number one lie right now. And I, 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 but I was just enjoying myself. <laughs> Kathy said, well, behind, my, behind my back going, mm -mm, somebody pull the string, you know, <laughs> break the thing, you know. But it was fun. You know why? Life. Just that simple. Mm. Write this down. Cemeteries are the emptiest places in the world. They are the, why are people afraid of dead people? They can't hurt you. Why are you afraid to go to a cemetery when it's dark? That's the safest place in New Orleans. Because even the criminals are scared to go in there. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? Well, I'm in my car. You better not be there. Steal it. <laughs> when you in it. Cemeteries. It's amazing to me. Why do you always have fences around cemeteries? Because they're dying to get in. <laughs> I heard that. Was, I thought that was funny. I, People freak out over graves, man. 
And if you really want to, <laughs> especially on Good Friday, and Sunday, people go put, you know, flowers, and that's wonderful, you know, in remembrance of people. And if they go at night, boy, if you're behind one, go, hello. <laughs> you got all the flowers you'll ever have. You can take every flower. Ain't nobody come. <laughs> and what you don't know is as soon as you leave, people steal your flowers and bring it to home. How many people know what I'm talking about? What happened to, what happened to mama's flowers? Cemeteries. Or was it seminaries? No, no, it said cemeteries. <laughs> Uh-oh. Are the emptiest places in the world. I tell college kids when they go to Bible school, don't come here looking for a wife. You don't want to come here looking for a wife. Because everybody try to act good when they're going to school. You want to meet your wife when you ain't in school. Okay, then you're going to find out what she really is or what he really is. Now, it's nice, to, you know, if you can find your mate at a, at a Bible school or Bible college, that's a blessing. But, you know, they're normally on their best behavior. So the best way to get a spouse is pray for one. And say, Lord, send me the lady or the man that you want me to be with all my life. And somebody show up and say, oh, Jesus, she a little ugly. <laughs> well, then pray this prayer. Blind me, Jesus. Because <laughs> beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I've had people tell me, isn't my husband, my husband's so good looking, I think. Your husband's face looks like a pepperoni pizza. I've had guys tell me, let me tell you something, man. I'm just, I love my wife. She's not fat. Well, what's all this stuff hanging out over on this side? What is that? I can't see it. See, that's love. That's life. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Kathy said, don't talk about women's weight. Well, they talk about it all the time. And they try to lose the best parts. Look at the men. I'm going to get off of that because I don't know, I, you know, I want to live another day. <laughs> Write this down. When a man really believes in Christ, when a man or a woman really believes in Christ, an act of union takes place between Christ and the Spirit. When a man really believes in Christ, an act of union takes place between Christ and the Spirit. Look what he said in verse 26 of St. John 11. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And that's not whosoever liveth and believeth, you shall never die. Because a union has taken place. Now let me tell you about that body. Yes, it's your earth suit, but God hadn't forgot it. How many people you know maybe died in terrible pain or maybe, I don't know, cancer ate them down to the bone or maybe they lost limbs and legs and all kinds of parts and terrible wars. But let me tell you something. You think you buried that body? Some people say, I, I want to be cremated because I don't want worms eating me. So you prefer fire to burn you up <laughs> and a roller to crush your bones. Then they put you in a mixer. That's what happens. And then they sweep the dust out. There might be some other people's dust. You don't know. And it may be somebody you hated all your life. I don't know. <laughs> That's what happens in cremation. You don't know. And you think, well, I poured them in a row. God said, I don't care if you turn them into dust. Or water cremation. All those men and women that died in wars in those ships. That's why you can't find human beings at the Titanic. Water will dissolve the bones. That's a cremation in a sense. Dissolve the flesh. Go. Yet, God Almighty because of life, 
will call to that body. Come out of there. That's life. And all the dust particles, how that could, it's almost unbelievable. But it's true. And that body will be connected together. Ah, but God will put liquid God in that body. And he'll let the devil know, you kill this body, I'm going to resurrect it, and I'm going to give it life. Isn't that amazing? Where there's resurrection, there's life. Think about that, sir. Let me say that again. And I love that point. When a man really or a woman believes in Christ, an act of union takes place between Christ and the Spirit. Now, what makes the resurrection? Write this down. Life makes the resurrection. Life is the higher and con 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 conclusive thoughts. That word I want to use there. Conclusive thoughts, what I want to say. Life makes the resurrection. Life is the higher and conclusive thought. In other words, thank God for resurrection day, but people ought to see the life that the resurrection caused to come. In fact, the life is what pulled the resurrection in. And Jesus, in hell, in hell, will you leave my soul in hell? No, 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 no. And hell lit up like a light, partner. And you hear that dumb, stupid Satan who thinks he's something goes, oh, man, if we'd have known, we'd have never crucified him because Satan can't handle life because he's death. He's decay. That's all he is. Isn't that amazing? Hmm. And why would you be afraid of a dead devil? Just like you're afraid of dead people in the cemetery. If you never want to be robbed, build a house right in the middle of the cemetery. <laughs> Ain't nobody going to your house. You don't want your family going to your house? Build a house in the cemetery. <laughs> That's amazing to me, buddy. See, life makes the resurrection. Life is the higher and conclusive thought because it's real. You see, I've, I've already died once. I got born again. I, I shall never die again. And there is a whole generation that their flesh won't die. It'll be changed, but it won't die. So if you really think about it, graveyards is such a waste of money because God can blow holes on every one of them. <laughs> I hope she don't mind me saying it, but I'm going to say it. We have a wonderful person that works for us named Denise. Now, we got two Denises, but this girl's Denise. Her husband, uh, Dale, just a wonderful guy, went home to be with the Lord, and I preached his funeral. They cremated Dale, and would they put that in an urn is what they call that? Or whatever you like. You know, some people put you in a cigar box. <laughs> That's okay, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, but whatever you want, you know, a vase, not a vase. That's Dillard's. A vase. <laughs> and she has his ashes, I think, on a, on, a, on, a, on a fireplace or something. And is Denise in here? I don't know if she is or not. <laughs> she may be, she's wonderful. She works for... Uh, for when all the way, when she waited back, Denise, I hope you don't mind me. And I said, I said, Denise, why do you have it there? She said, I want to see the rapture. I want to see him fly out that bowl. <laughs> fly out that. <laughs> Can you imagine? That's Denise. I thought, that's a good idea. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Nothing but dust. And there's Dale. Come on, mama, we're going. We laugh at that, but that could happen. If we are the generation that doesn't see death, and I pray that every day, not that I'm afraid to die. I don't like funerals because I don't like sadness. But what's so wonderful about a Christian's funeral is you're going to see them again. 
So life makes the resurrection. Life is the higher conclusive thought. Write this down. There can be no loneliness with the companionship of Christ. That doesn't mean you don't miss your husband or wife. Or, well, let me just say this. My, my last brother passed away two weeks ago, about two weeks ago. I am the only Duplantis left. <laughs> now, I got a lot of cousins and nephews and, you know, and, you know nieces and all that kind of, but my, in my family, in my, the siblings, there was four of us in my family, Wayne Duplantis, Jesse Duplantis, Deborah Duplantis, and Mark, they're all gone to heaven. All my mother's generation has gone home to be with the Lord. Except one, one aunt, my aunt Barbara, and I went to visit her the other day. Had a wonderful time. She's 87 or 88, something like that. Okay? So this is it. It's me. Maybe I'm the Duplantis that won't die. Amen. And you know how many people, you know how many people have been trying to kill me? <laughs> how many people, you know, uh, 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 uh. And people say, well, how do you, but Jesse, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. He's in heaven. My two brothers are in heaven. My sister's in heaven. My parents are in heaven. My grandparents are in heaven. Well, I don't know if one of them is, but uh, three of them are for sure. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. I don't know about my grandpa on my dad's side. <laughs> <laughs> if I see him, I'm going to say, that's mercy, Lord Jesus. <laughs> He was one, whoo, but anyway, that's another story. All my aunts, my great aunts, my great uncles, we never would call, your great uncle, you would call, you call your uncle, uncle, and you call your great uncle, nonk. That's French. But, you know, you know that nonk. I had a nonk na and a nonk black and a nonk shoe. Strange people in our family. I was a little bit boy, you know, as they begin to, you know, go home and be with the Lord. But them girls, boy, my great aunts, and I mean, they just wouldn't let their husbands go to hell. And I remember I told one one time, I, she said, I'm not letting him go to hell. I said, I've heard you tell him to go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> she said, shut up, Jesse. I said, okay, but you did tell him to go to hell. I heard you. I was about seven years old. I heard you. You know, kids remember stuff and hear things. There's no loneliness. That doesn't mean you don't miss your husband or your grandfather. I loved them. My two grandmas were phenomenal. I, mean, I, I enjoyed being about my grandma. They loved me. I could do no wrong. It was great. I mean, I drank like a fish. You know what my grandma would say? Well, maybe he was thirsty. <laughs> they just loved me, man. How you doing, Grandma? I said, I'm doing good, Grandma. It's just a blessing. One I call Grandma, the other one I call Mama. Short women. Four foot nine, four foot 11. You stack them, then they make one person. <laughs> just a little bit. But they control that house. It was great. And we were raised Catholic in my, <laughs> my grandmother on my dad's side. Her name was Julia. She was a Luke. They call her Julien. French. She was wonderful. I mean, she was just, just, just wonderful. And she got born again. We never heard that word before in our lives. She had a resurrection. Grandma, and she had great life, but boy, after she was born again, I mean, life exuded from her. And we all freaked out. We had a family meeting. Or like the mafia said, we had to sit down. We're going to discuss this. And she's looking at us. And she was the most powerful person in the room, and she was four foot nine. I said, what's the... <laughs> Everyone almost in unison said, what's the matter? You're leaving the mother church? She looked at all of us. She said, shut up. We did. <laughs> That's big mama talking. She said, I met Jesus. I said, what do you look like? I didn't know what that was. You know, I, I never heard met Jesus. I got saved from what? You're going to leave the mother church? No. She's, she got born again by a man whose name is John Murdoch, who passed who was Mike Murdoch's father. She started it all on, the, on my dad's side. 
Yeah, that's how it happened. On my mother's side, it started with my mama. Got them all saved. They were powerful, man. My mama got her mother saved. Kathy got her family saved. Now, Kathy was brutal. She got born again. She hadn't seen her mom in almost a year. Walks into the house and goes, hi, mom. You're going to hell. <laughs> and Irene said, that's nice, Kathy. <laughs> She's just so glad to see Kathy. I said, back off, Kathy. You don't think God got a sense of humor? He made her a pastor. <laughs> you don't make a person a pastor when you tell your mama you're going to hell. No. <laughs> you know, lighten up a little bit, woman. Now, I heard it all the time. You're going to hell, you're demon possessed, and you're a devil. <laughs> and it took five to six, seven years after I was saved for her to quit using those words. But other than that, they know about me. <laughs> because, you know, it lied to come back on. No. I received life. I was finished with the world. See, there, let me say it again. There can be no loneliness with the companionship of Jesus. Why? Just like I said about Dan Bonagino here, I'm going to use this. The apostles saw him and, was, and the apostles were martyred for him. No one dies. No one's a martyr for a lie. They knew he had rose from the dead. So I tell you people that don't believe that you're going to stand before him. Right now, he's your savior. You don't want to see him as your judge. Why don't you let him expunge your record? Forgive you of all your sin. Give you some resurrected life. Think about that. Glory to God. Now what, let me close with it. What are we going to do? I know my mother went home to be with the Lord 41 years ago today. My mother passed away on Easter Sunday. I preached a funeral. I'll never forget it. Mama always liked to party, so you know there's a party going on. Why? Because there was a party when Jesus was born. I mean, angels shouting and singing. You know they got to. So what are we going to do at the resurrection party in heaven? You think we're going to have chocolate rabbits? <laughs> Easter bunnies? I don't know. I don't think so. I know something a lot better than that. And if it's sweet, you better eat as much as you want, not get fat. See, you got to understand. <laughs> this is great. When, when God resurrects your body, giving you fat, the fat stays in there. You come out looking, woo. Look at the ladies. <laughs> Look at the men. Oh, yeah. Go with that. God. It's going to be a wonderful day. But I pray that you don't miss it. Well, I don't believe that. That don't change it. I don't believe in taxes, but I pay them. And I'm going to pay a lot of money in the next few days, and I paid a lot of money all year long. I pay more ta My tax bill is probably higher than most of you people make in, in your salary. I mean, I don't get mad at me. Some of y'all, hey. I can't help it if I'm blessed. It's the life. It's the life that brings life. See, so we, we are celebrating his resurrection, but I want you to focus more on celebrating his life because if you focus on celebrating his life, it'll be resurrection day every day. Give Jesus a hand clap for this message. You enjoyed it? Yeah. In just a minute, we're going to receive the morning tithe and all. Do we have to resurrect your wallet? <laughs> I thought that was funny myself. You know? You know, the reason why we receive offerings in this church, because Jesus did. We do the works of Christ. He says, bring all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house. Well, we don't believe in tithing. Okay. Tithing is not for today. Well, why don't you just tell the truth? You don't want to tithe. Just tell the truth. Well, we're not, we're not under the law. I ain't dealing with the law. I'm dealing with your wallet. How else do you put God first? What would you do if you saw some person, as soon as they got their check, and you were in line behind them, they won't cash the check at the bank, and they turned around and said, well, and if they said, I'm bringing this 10% to my church, you'd say, man, they must really love that church. How else do you put God first? Yep. Well, them churches is all about money. No, it isn't. See, that's a total another misconception. 
You've heard me say it before. If tithing was about money, why wouldn't God change the rate? He's never changed the rate. It's 10%. You know how many thousands a year? But the mortgage people change the rates. The credit card people change the rates. When you buy a card, they change the rates. See what I'm saying? God don't do that. No, you don't have to. You get to. Then in Luke 6, 38, he says, given it shall be given unto you. So you want some, you want some return and it shall be given to you. Well, how much? Good measure, pressed down, shaking, get it running over. What's wrong with that? Hmm. Yeah. My Lord. Then you get over to 3rd John. Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper. And if you sow it in good ground, and this is good ground, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. And if you're born again, you're the seed of Abraham. And he was very rich in cattle, silver, and gold. You have a great legacy. My God. But when Jesus came out that grave, he came out with life. Not only was that something exciting to see, Satan thought the stone would keep him in. The soldiers wouldn't let him. They all fell down as dead men. Angels sitting on there proclaiming that he's risen. Thank God for that Mary Magdalene boy, the first evangelist. Took off running down that road as fast as she could and said, he's alive. Yes. Yes. And she died a martyr. Yes. People don't die for a lie. I'm going to ask you to give today, especially today, in honor of who he is. And, and he's going to honor you with a harvest. Think about that. How many of you could use a good harvest? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah no. Wave it at the Lord. Yeah, you know, that's not greed. That's just the truth. It's such a blessing. I ask you to do your best. You that are watching all over the world, faith destroys all distance between me and you. We ask you to be a giver and a partner to this ministry. It's totally debt free. Isn't that amazing that everything you give to this ministry, none goes to pay debt of any kind? My financial director is here. Wendy, stick your hand up. Stand up, Wendy. So people, am I telling the truth? We have no debt. Am I right? None. Amen. Thank you, Wendy. None. So if you give $20, we get 20 people saved. We ask the Lord for every dollar given our ministry to give us a soul into the kingdom. I'm about ready to hit these mission fields going all over, and it's going to cost me anywhere from $400,000 to $500,000 flying over there, and I'm not charging them a dime. Most people, you've got to pay their expenses. I'm not against that. That's fine. But you ain't got to pay mine. Why? Because he said he didn't ask me to pay for it. He asked me to believe for it. I had one man time who said, well, I know, I, but I like to give. Well, if you want to do that, you can. But you don't have to. I know. That's what I like about you, Brother Jesse. There ain't no pressure. If you want to, fine. You're not fine. No, I'm not your judge. But I am a very blessed man, not because of my business sense. It's because of my giving. I do it every day. It's just such a blessing of the Lord. And I ask you to do the same. That if you're giving today, there's an envelope on the back of the pew. You make your check out the Covenant Church if you like. And uh, they got that all up. If you want to give online, there's the JDM website, jdm.org. You can go give on that line. I hit the donate button. You can use PayPal if you'd like to do that. Uh, if you want to text to give, you can do it U.S. residents only, a one-time donation, or you can do a recurring amount if you want. That's up to you. Or you can go to the online mobile app and give that way. There's so many different ways you can give. But you give because you want to, not because you have to. You're willing and obedient. And then, please, we've been talking. Uh, I, I, I invite everyone that's listened to me today that we've done three weeks of part one, part two, and part three on God's financial plan, the 104. I ought to preach that at this church. But I'd have to do a revival to do it. I'd have to look at God to do me more than one service. And I'm telling you, it will, it will tell you, and I get very straight about that. This financial plan has been in the Bible since the beginning of it. No one should ever find, be struggling financially whatsoever at all. I know what the church told you. It's a lie. Poverty is a curse. It's a curse. And it breeds more curse. Look at all the homeless people in San Francisco. They say San Francisco is about ready to turn off. I mean, the drugs in the street. They give them money. If you pay people to be poor, they stay poor. Right. 
You don't want poverty. You want to come out of that. I tell people to come to the government church, you don't want no government, government money. You want to be so blessed that the government wants your money. You want to be able to take care of anything you need to take care of, when you want, when you, where you want, how you want. You understand that? Yeah. You don't even need Social Security. No, it's your money. You should get it. Don't misunderstand me. Why? Because you ought to be, if you decide to retire, blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going in, blessed going out. That's the financial plan. I, I invite people to go to those boardroom chats. Part one, part two, part three. You're going to hear some strong stuff. But I'm telling you, it works because it works for me and many, many other people. What you give today, well, go into the operation of the of Covenant Church. If you want to give to our wonderful projects that are happening all over, we believe in God for a $20 million donor. That close. That close. Because there's a $20 million project on the table. We'll knock that out and go on to the next thing. I mean, it's just amazing what God's doing. And it's just such a blessing. How many of you want a hundredfold? That's Mark chapter 4. I believe verse 8. Mark chapter 10 in red. Go read it. It believe that like you believed St. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. You want a career? You want to be noticed? Yeah. Let your light shine. Who people are drawn to life. I ask you to do your best. You give me a thousand dollars, I get a thousand people say, today's Sunday, I'll have them by Friday. We are going to have a wonderful time this Friday with Jonathan Shuttlesworth. I want you to come. I'm telling you, I, I, I want this place packed up. This boy, he's a, he's a walking revival. He's become a good friend. Him and his wonderful wife of Dallas. They're blessing. They're from Pittsburgh. You probably see them all over the uh, internet and all the different things of that nature. Blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to be here. Now, you don't think I'm busy? <laughs> this week? Well, I mean, after I finish today, then I got, I don't know if I'm doing television tomorrow. I think I am. So I'm doing something. Like, or oh, then Tuesday, where I'm going to be? I'm going to be in Huntington, West Virginia. Come see me, you people in West Virginia, Huntington. Tuesday, I'll be in Harms, New Mexico. My God. Wednesday, I'll be in Kerrville, Texas. No, Thursday, I'll be in Kerrville, Texas. Tuesday, I'll be in, where am I at, Mary? Where am I going to be at? Okay. T Tuesday, I'll be in Huntington, West Virginia. Wednesday, I'll be in Harms, New Mexico. Thursday, I will be in Kerrville, Texas. Friday, I will be here celebrating with Jonathan at preaching the gospel. Saturday, is the rapture coming, Kathy? You the pastor, do, is the rapture coming? Yeah, no, I hope so. Okay, praise the Lord. <laughs> Someone asked the other day, I noticed, Brother Jesse, when you sit, sometimes you get up and you start walking and Pia Fortune walks over to you. Yeah, you might go in the room. What is Pia doing? Well, she's a supervisor of the finance. She's showing me figures. So if we're in heaven, and you see me walk to the side, and Pia's walking. She's going to show me some figures <laughs> of the universe. Because do you think we're going to stop doing this when all the gifts of God are without repentance? Amen. There's stuff out there you don't know. We have multiple universes now, and they're so big that our minds can't conceive it. I don't think I'll ever retire in my natural life, and I know I'm not going to retire in my eternity life because God's a creator. Think about this right now. Right now. Let me show you how big this thing is. This creator, this I am, that the universe is expanding right now, sweetheart, faster than the speed of light. That's fast, sweetheart. Faster. 186,000 miles a second. 5.7 trillion miles a year. Right now, boom! What's he doing? Creating. Creating what? I don't know. But I'm going to be a part of it. And you that are born again will be a part of it. Usher, stand to your feet. We're going to receive this wonderful offering. I hope you give a wonderful offering. I'm not going to take any of it. I ask you to just do your best. Father, thank you today for the hundredfold for that wonderful financial plan you put in that Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Thank you for Resurrection Day, Lord, that we're going we're gonna to focus on life all, all this year into the next Resurrection Sunday. Bless the people today because they're so courteous and kind in their giving. Covenant Church is a true covenant family. We thank you for it. We believe you for it. 
We call it done in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Ushers, go ahead and receive this morning's offer. If you're watching online, you can give that way also. And if some of you are going to be in Bermuda, I hope you can come. I hope you can come when I'm in uh, Verona, Italy. I hope you can come when I'm in Denmark. I've never been to Denmark. I'm really looking forward to it. I've never been to Switzerland. I'll be in Switzerland preaching a convention there with some other ministers too. I think they're showing up. Hallelujah. And then I'm going to South Africa. Kathy, am I going to Johannesburg or Cape Town? Do you remember? New London. Is that close to Joburg? I don't know, but it's in South Africa. We'll fly all over there. And then for God, help me, Australian people. I hadn't been there since the COVID, and I'm so jammed solid. But I'm going to try to make Australia if I can. Let me tell you something about Australia. It's bigger than the continent of the United States. To fly from Sydney to Perth takes longer than to fly from New York to uh, Los Angeles. And then I got to fly from all the way from Perth to Sydney, all the way across the Pacific Ocean, stop in Hawaii, refuel, shoo, and then head to America, and get back down to New Orleans. That's going to be some long flights, buddy. Now you understand why I have a plane? They can't fly my schedule because I'm preaching at night and during the day. And there's been times I've preached at night in one city and in the morning in a different city. Didn't have time. You, can't, you don't have time. Stand to your feet right now. I'm going to give you an opportunity to meet this wonderful person called Jesus Christ. To know him is to love him so that he can give you life and that more abundantly. If you gentlemen could move this uh, thing away, please. I don't. To know him, I know it's a little, uh, not really, it's actually early, 1131. I know you're going to be eating Easter dinner and all that stuff, and that's good. But do you know the Lord? Have you met the Savior? If not, I'd love to introduce him to you. It's called getting born again. It's called being raised from the dead with a life that is actually indescribable to be able to get up in the morning and to know, not believe, but to know that you'll never be alone, that you'll know your destiny, your destination. And when you know that word, it will be done here for you as it is in heaven. It's called getting born again. Every head bowed, please. If you'd like to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, would you give me the honor to introduce you to my friend that's getting born again for the very first time? May have been the church. You may even believe in Christ, but do you know him? That's the difference. I want you to know him. I used to stop there. I was trained that way, Renee. And the Lord said, always take it further. Maybe you're here today, you're struggling with your Christianity. And you want to stop that. How do I do that? By drawing closer to God. Some people call it rededicate. That's a good word. I call it selling out. To draw closer to God. So you not struggle with Christianity in your life. Because you're never alone with Jesus as your companion. So if you'd like to know God for the first time, or you're not where you should be, and you're struggling with your Christianity, and you need to draw closer to God or come back. Would you get out of your seat and just walk forward? In front of everybody? Yeah, their heads bowed, their eyes are closed. Yeah, in front of everybody. Yeah, anything wrong with that? Why not? Why not? Accept Jesus. And if all of us are saved today, that's wonderful. And if you're not struggling, that's even better. But I believe there are people here that need to make a decision for the Lord. Is that you today? Everybody be praying here. I'm going to wait a minute. I'm going to ask you to make your decision. And I ask you to meet me at the front of this place. I know it's, a, I'm going to hold you long, I promise you. In any way, shape, or form. Come on, people, pray with me. Come on. I don't hear you praying. I want you praying. Because if no one comes, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm excited. Everybody pull me kid. But if you don't know, if you're not where you should be, oh, that, oh, you need to just get so close to God. He'll get so close to you. It will shock you. I want everybody praying. I want to hear you praying. Come on. Thank you, Lord. I know there's people on the line out there. I know there's people saying that on, 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 online. We understand that. But I'm talking about physically here right now. You that are online, I want you to write us. And we'll send you some literature. We'll, we'll help you. 
I don't care if you're watching this in Uganda. We can get to you. We can help you. Just get out of your seat and come stand. Thank you, sir. Just stand right there. It's, it's not easy to do that. It's not, it's, not, it's not easy to do that. This man is worth more than the whole planet. Papa said one soul. One. Isn't that amazing? It's not easy. Why did Jesus, why do you tell people to come forward? So you can count them? No. Because Jesus called people publicly. Be honest with yourself. You see what I'm saying? Don't walk out a lie. Walk out as the truth. And if you'll let that happen, God will honor you and bless you and never waste your Keep praying. The Lord said, just wait a minute. I'm under no pressure whatsoever at all. Come on, praise the Lord. What a blessing. Yes, sir. Just stand right here. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it just takes a little time. You know, I didn't get born again in a church. I got born again in a bathroom, Boston, Massachusetts. But when I went to church, I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to walk forward. It felt kind of funny. I'm going to be honest with you, it was almost a little embarrassing. I didn't know what to do. But I found that the people that were standing there, they were so glad I did. They weren't making fun of me. They were rejoicing. They now had a new brother and a new sister. Come on, thank you, sweetheart. I appreciate that. Yeah, isn't that a blessing? I wish I'd have came when I was your age. I didn't. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. What a blessing. People keep praying with me. It's 11.35. I'm, I'm going to finish this real quick, but I want to take time. Come, my man. Thank you. Just being honest with yourself. That's it. Why not, man? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any others? Because I want to pray. And all you that have come forward, I want you to look at me. Please look at me. I will never lie to you. Ma'am, I've had so many people lie to me, and I don't know why. Sweetheart, I would never lie to you. I would never lie to you, sir. You see, what happened, you started it. You made the step. Once people make a step, other people make a step. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I want everybody to pray this prayer. And all you that have come forward, I want you to keep your head up and your eyes open. And I want you to look at me. And I want you to repeat this prayer. And I want everyone in the audience, and you that are watching all over the world, I want you to repeat this prayer today. Would you do it? Would you do it? Got one more person coming, sweetheart? We're waiting on you. Come on. What a blessing of the Lord. Yeah, that's wonderful. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you, sweetheart. I, I appreciate you coming. Thank you. Now, I'm going to tell all of you, look at me. You, you don't have to come. You did because you wanted to. Something tugged your heart. You know what it was? resurrection life let's pray together Lord Jesus I ask you to come into my life and forgive me of all my sin I confess my sin before you this day I denounce Satan and all his works I confess Jesus as the Lord of my life thank you for saving me for drawing me closer to who you are. I believe with my heart. I confess with my mouth. Jesus rose from the dead that I am saved. From this day forward, I will no longer struggle with my Christianity or anything. I give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Guide me and direct me on what to do. And from this day forward, I am yours and you are mine. I pray this prayer to the Father in the name of Jesus. Amen. Stand right there. Give him a hand clap. You made it. That wasn't hard, was it? That pretty simple, wasn't it, sir? Was that, that wasn't hard, was it? I don't know why the church makes it hard. It's not hard. Let me just look at you for a minute. You see, I may not be able to get to talk to you here, but I'm going to find you in heaven. I want to know about you. I want to know your dreams. Because you see, eternity is way bigger than our minds can see. I'm, I'm going to invite myself to your house. I'm coming. I'll find you, sweetheart. Now, when you see me, I want you to know that. I'm going to have brown hair just like yours. It won't, it won't be white no more. I'm going to come. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to your house. 
I'm serious. I'm serious as I can be about that. I'm coming, sweetheart. I, I, I want to. Because you, you're, you're a great, you're a human being. You made a step, and no devil in hell could stop you. No power on earth could hold stop you. When I go to your house, you won't have that walker. And Father, I lay my hands on his hands that you fix his body. Lord, he had a hard time walking for it. I ask you to heal him because where there's salvation, there's healing. Restore everything that needs restoration. And everyone else in this place that needs a miracle in their body. And I thank you for it, Lord. And I believe you for it. And Kathy, we go, is Ron going to bring these people? Okay, Pastor Ron, come up here a little bit. This is Ron, uh, one of our pastors, a good friend of mine. He wants to talk to you for a minute. We'll not hold you long. We know it's Easter Sunday. And we're, and we're going to take you. We want you to go with him and just, just for a minute. And listen, I'm telling you, don't be surprised when I show up in heaven at your house. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, I'm coming. I swear to God, I'm, I'm coming. And I've told that to people. And I've had some people say, you know, you told me that 30 years ago. I said, you want to know where I told it? Hey? They couldn't believe it. That man's got a mind. Oh, I got a memory for you. I got a brain. It's so big. I don't know how it fits in my head. <laughs> and I'm bragging on that. But the Lord quickens me about people. You're so important to me. I'm not a prejudiced man. I don't know no color. I don't care about any. I... Uh, am I right, Ron? We've been friends for what, 35, 40? Yeah, I'll tell you the blessing. I don't know he's black. He don't know I'm white. See, we men. See that? We stand shoulder to shoulder. <laughs> he looks a lot better than me, but he's got half of his new body. I still have my old one yet. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hello. So I want you to go with him. So, Ron, you show, would you just walk this way and maybe someone can help this man? Or we can, can you help him? Would you just walk this way, brother, just for a minute? And we just want to pray with you right here. Give, yes, you just walk that way if you don't mind. Give him a hand clap. Would you do that? Okay, take a little time right there. Now, I, I, those people are being touched and blessed by God. I want this Sunday to be a new day for you spiritually, physically, and financially. I want you to be able to come back without this. And thank God you got this. That's a blessing. I mean, I thank God for doctors and equipment and, you know, whatever. But if I can walk, and I'm probably older than you are. I, 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 you know, people, my granddaughter, I said, Joe, I said, Mary, do you think grandfather's old? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a good church, it's a good one. All we'll do is just love you. Kathy, come. This is Kathy. Don't she look good today, Lord Jesus? In her blue. What a blessing. Never thinking in my entire life. I've never been through changes. God called me to do one, and I've been doing it since the day he called me. Kathy's changed from all different things into a pastor, as well as all the other stuff that she does. We'd love to have you as part of our family. And I mean that sincerely. You'll be, never be a day without prayer. I will pray for you. There, I'll call your name every day as soon as I get up. Our flag lady been having some problems in her body. I call her name. Judy Wilcox, if you're listening to me, I call your name and you're in Okeechobee, Florida. Donna Romanga, I call your name every day. Hey, Sid, Sidney Woods, I call your name every day. Greg Peace, he's in here. I call your name every day. Wendy, I call your name every day. Rick and Christine, I call y'all name every day. Hey, Tina Ford, there in Sugar Land, Texas, I call your name every day. Oh, there's so many I call. Good God. I just go through it. I don't have it on the list. It just comes in my mind. You'll never be a day without prayer. You people in Norman, Oklahoma, when I went there in 1990, I call your name every day. I don't forget. I call, boy, because you have a right. And that's what resurrection life does to you. 
It gives you the rights and privileges as a child of God to come boldly to the throne of grace. Don't miss this Friday if you can come. Brother Jonathan Shuttle's voice will be here and we're going to have a glorious time. We're going to have a big crowd. God's going to bless and minister greatly in every area. Kathy, you have anything to say? Uh, no. Uh, you, uh, Roy, got a mic if you want it. Sure. No, I'm fine. You sure you want to dismiss him? You can. Can I do that? Yes. You let me? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Oh, she's telling me what to tell you. Thank you for coming. Is there anything, is there anything else you'd like me to say? Okay, okay, praise the Lord. So until next time, shake somebody's hand, tell them you love them and we love them. And we'll see you next time right here at Covenant Church. God bless you. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.